During the Trojan War, Homer wrote about dozens of brave people whose names will live forever. But Agamemnon, the great leader and king of Mycenae, ended up more famous than Achilles, Odysseus, Ajax, or Diomedes. The son of Atreus was the only person who could get all the other Greek chieftains to fight in distant places in Helen's honor. Agamemnon led the Achaeans and fought the Trojans for ten years in front of the impenetrable wall. Despite all that went wrong, Agamemnon won the war, leading to Troy's downfall. The great Basilius amassed many of the war spoils, including the beautiful princess and prophetess who was the daughter of King Priam. Her name was Cassandra, so beautiful that the god Apollo fell in love with her. Agamemnon told her that he would take her as a slave to his court in Mycenae. She retorted, if he knew what awaited him in his homeland, he would never return to Greece. Although Cassandra was a true prophetess, Apollo cursed her for her rejection, and no one believed what she said. Agamemnon did not know that his wife Clytemnestra was ruling in Mycenae with her lover Aegisthus. The queen deeply hated Agamemnon because he killed her daughter Iphigenia to lead Greeks to war. Having had her favorite daughter killed because of her husband, she simply could not ever forgive him. The ships in Agamemnon's fleet were brimming with treasures when they returned to Greece. It appeared that he would be the only Greek leader whose fleet would return to Greece without damage. But, as Agamemnon and his fleet were approaching the Peloponnese, a storm came up. Basilius asked the gods why they were punishing him, since he had done everything they told him to do during his ten-year stay in Troy. The prophetess Cassandra told him that the gods were not trying to punish him. Instead, they were trying to keep him alive, away from meeting his terrible demise in Mycenae. For the second time, Agamemnon said that Cassandra's gorgeous mouth was just talking nonsense, since he would reach the zenith of his glory as conqueror of Troy in Mycenae. The Mycenae palace learned that Agamemnon was returning from Troy. Aegisthus and Clytemnestra planned to get rid of the king before he could take his throne back. Agamemnon had two children, Electra and Orestes, who knew of their mother's relationship with Mycenae's acting regent. Agamemnon arrived in Mycenae as if he were Hercules' second coming. People cheered him as he walked through the legendary Lion Gate of Mycenae. He brought with him many valuable things from Troy. Clytemnestra knelt at Agamemnon's feet and thanked the gods for bringing back her husband in glory, but the whole scene was part of a plan. If the queen still cared about her husband, that vanished when she saw the beautiful Cassandra following him. Clytemnestra then thought about the words of Palamedes' father, the hero who was killed at Troy after being accused of treason. He said that the Achaeans' leaders had made their slaves their wives. Agamemnon thanked Aegisthus for taking such good care of his kingdom while he was absent. This showed that the feud between their families were over. Agamemnon embraced his children Orestes and Electra, who were small children when he left. The Mycenaean king told his wife that he had missed her very much and would like to sleep with her, but first he wanted to take a bath. After fighting for ten years, Agamemnon felt that he could finally relax in his hot tub. Aegisthus then threw a net over Agamemnon, catching him completely off guard. The Greek king was attacked by Clytemnestra and Aegisthus, who beat him to death. Since Clytemnestra was jealous of the young woman, she killed the slave Cassandra with two axe blows when she ran to see what was happening. The story of Basilius Agamemnon had come to a dreadful end, like many other descendants of Tantalus, but the fate of the children Electra and Orestes was still unknown.